It's VHSX. What do you mean? It's weird. Like, I'm trying to find the, the middle ground here. Because it's like, if you hook them... If you hook them, then it means that they're gonna die on the hook, right? And then if they die on the hook, that means that they die, and then that means you lose two gens. But if you don't, and you try to slug them, then that's also hard, because you can't confirm, like, that it's gonna work well. On the other hand... On the other hand... Is Trixer still kill switch? No, he's not actually. Um, he's not actually. No, we all might be go to because they just can't the ice gates. Uh, all the gens get down. It's true. Not me reading chat while I'm in chase. Yeah, I want to get that out real quick. All right. Anyway, no, why they keep doing that bullshit? Yeah, yeah, keep standing there. This is good, he's still there. I'm trying to play this a little bit more strategically. Yeah, we'll just have to do it. <laughs> We're just gonna have to do it this way. Oh no! <laughs> we just gotta do it that way. Yo! We just gotta keep downing him over and over. Where is he? Yeah, that gen's gonna fly. I can't stop that. I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna hide from him. Like, that's not gonna make it matter. He said no hooks. I'm just gonna go no hooks. Why Why even hook in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Because if I hook them, they get, the, they get every second chance under the sun. So, like, why even do that? Why not just ignore their second chances, ignore the gen speeds, and then just deal with the uh, deal with what we can here. And, uh, you know how well you can play it because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with you. Because gens are going to anyone. Is hook two survivors early as possible? But that's the issue, right? That's the issue. We the issue is we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? The issue is, is that because we're killing them fast, that's what's allowing the, the glitch to go off. So you're essentially saying, oh, hey, look, I need you to kill them, like, literally quicker than you can blink, just so that you have a chance at, at, at making a comeback here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got, like, we got to consider everybody else, like, uh, and uh, what's going on uh, on that side of town. Check spot, maybe? But knockout's not bad at all. You know what I'm saying? Knockout's not bad at all, especially if I could like like if I focus mainly on marking and downing as much as I can. Sloppy butcher to keep them injured and stuff like that. Um, and then the recovery is a lot slower. It might be able to like just have a lot of them slug to buy more slowdown, which is ultimately what we're looking for. Because now everybody, as you can see, everybody's on the ground and nobody knows where to go. So that's what, like what I'm banking on right now. It's like, like nobody knows what to do. We use our stealth to, to, to get us to uh, find where they're going. Right? I mean, not find where they're going. So, like we use the stealth so we can figure out like, you know, uh, where to go next. And also... But as you can see, I think this build could work. And then we clear and then we have brutal strength to clear out the palace. Do you want to clear these out so that we can just quickly get into the next uh, the next thing?
waiting on a car, bro. What are you waiting on? So, J. Wayne says, I do play Huntress, though, with a side of Freddy, so maybe different. I don't play Ghosty much. That's what I'm saying. So, like, when I'm playing a character like Ghostface or Freddy, like, I, with Freddy, because he has map mobility, I can kind of make it work. But, like, with, uh, like, with Ghostface, like, right now, I'm, like, I'm able to get the downs pretty rapidly, so that's good for me. That doesn't work on me, stupid. Ah! Because, as you can see, we're doing quite well. We're keeping them injured constantly. We're constantly hitting them. Like, they, they have no choice. So, you know, he thinks he's vaulting or some shit. Like, I don't know what you're vaulting. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. This is the build to go with, then. This is the build to go with. Because, as you can see, they're not even on gens anymore. Now, now they're all on search trying to find each other to heal each other. And then after I'm done downing one guy, I go to run to the next one. We keep them in the torture chamber. This is the way to do it, probably. See, they're trying to full heal. Hold on, I gotta down her next. Yeah, they just get downed again. I have no problem with that. Yep, get downed again. I do not care. He's gonna wait behind this, yeah, because he knows he can't walk out. This is a pretty good build, bro. Yeah, I know. I know. I know, Jay Wayne. I know the feeling. But that's how we have to do it. That's how you have to do it, unfortunately. It, it makes the game long, but it is it is good for me at least because if you're able to down all four of them in a row, you can just win off of that alone. This Leon is scared out of his mind. Plus, I'm getting a lot of points. Only thing about this is Swift destroys it because they leave. further they keep running and running and running, the easier and easier it gets for me to do this build. Because then what happens is, what happens is, hold on, hold on, I gotta, I gotta get, get the, I gotta down Jill. Anyway, so as I was saying, so the, the so the the uh, the great part about this build, right, as well as the eerie add-on. I don't know how I just got insta revealed. Oh, the, the bot is like instant revealing me through the wall. Now Swift's probably can counter it, like most likely, but I don't think it really matters that much. I saw her, by the way. I just don't know if she'll get hatch or not. Now we can just let her bleed out too. So what do you guys think of the build? <laughs> let me know in the chat. What do you guys think of the build? Uh, anything else? I could not get a 4K in with the current like uh, gen bug and everything. Like it was impossible. And look, 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 look. Look at what we avoided, bro. Decisive, dead hard. Uh, well, I don't know about Iron Will, but flashbang. Well, I mean, we didn't avoid too much stuff, but still. Autodidact was basically useless. All right, we got ourselves gameplay number two for the knockout build that we are using to counter the gen glitch um, with Ghostface. Now, with the perks that we are using are Bamboozle, Knockout, Sloppy Butcher, Brutal Strength. We're also using the eerie add-on Ghostface caught on tape. 
so that we're able to get our power back with each and every M1. Now the philosophy around uh, is, is it philosophy? The strategy around uh, around the uh, the build here is ultimately trying to utilize knockout, keep them on the ground as much as we can, and use that instead of trying to hook them. Now keep in mind that if the survivor does get eliminated from the trial, it does mean that it, you will end up losing two generators for the price of one. So with that being said, the idea would be is like we're using sloppy butcher so that when they do try to like, you know, we hit them and then they're, they're going to be constantly having to heal each other and it'll be a lot slower in general. But also the fact that if they do end up having to be healed, um, uh, when they get picked up, they can't complete like they, they may not be able to because of knockout because of the fact that um, they're sloppy butcher. It makes it like two times more difficult to recover that like recover their teammates and pick them up. Um, and also it makes it so that if they are injured, they can't necessarily heal themselves constantly. And that's pretty much the strategy. Now, keep in mind also, like we're, we're showcasing, uh, we're actually going against two TTVs here. Um, and, uh, we were able to, uh, do quite well, I would say. Um, we also use brutal strength because of the fact that we don't necessarily have an anti-lupus ghost phase. So you want to at least be able to eliminate, um, those options. Now we are going for a lot of M1s mainly because we want to we want to keep everybody injured um, as much as possible. Now, obviously, um, I was experimenting. I was figuring that maybe I could try using maybe Philly um, instead to experiment and see if maybe Drop Leg wasn't right. But I do find that Drop Leg is also quite effective um, at being able to catch close the gap on survivors that are marked. Um, and we also want to clear out all the pallets. So if they're going to give you pallets, you just want to be able to clear them out. And that's why Brutal Strength is going to allow you to do that very quickly. So you can cut down on chase time and cut down on the, um, the pallet, uh, you know, numbers. Um, so, and then Bamboozle is also a great perk just in general to cut down on a lot of the loops. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately we don't, we don't run anything about hooks. We don't run anything that involves hooking. We don't involve anything. You don't use anything that involves, um, anything beyond chase and knocking them down. So it's a very, um, very uh, chase-heavy build. It's all it's very focused on trying to just slug them out of the game, um, because if uh, if you hook them, they can just easily, uh, you know, pull the hook and then they will be eliminated, and then you you will have to deal with the glitch. But if you're dealing with the fact that um, they're on they're still in the on the ground, they they aren't going to be immediately eliminated. Therefore, extending the match out. So that you're able to actually, you know, play the game, <laughs> which is ultimately what, we're, what it's about. And so it's almost like hooking. It does take a lot more effort, obviously, due to the fact that you do need to constantly be on, on, you know, on the survivors, constantly be um, very aggressive and constantly need to have them injured at all times at, or knocked down until eventually they'll be whittled down into the uh, into the deadlock of just all being knocked at the same time. So what you're essentially doing, and if you play it right, which is obviously, you know, very chase focused, you're, you're, you're trying to clear out the pallets, you're trying to um, get the altruism if you can, um, that ultimately will be very helpful. Now, keep in mind also it can work against other, like, other teams and stuff like that. Um, that uh, it could work against other teams that are, you know, you know, that maybe not aren't as altruistic because of the fact that they... Uh, if they aren't going to pick up their teammate, that means that, that the survivor who is knocked out um, will just not be found as easily, therefore allowing for more bleed out time. And then that's ultimately what you want. Um, and that it's that's mainly the goal is to is to take people out of the game, like how it is with just hooking somebody, but also um, you know making it essentially as if you hook them without hooking them in the first place. It's essentially what the point of the of the of the the build is. Now, as you can see, like if you're being if you're paying attention to the gameplay, you are noticing how I'm playing this. Like I'll mark whoever's whoever's uh, healthy, and I'll down whoever's injured, and then just be able to, and I'll just go with that. You know, we go with that. We knock them down. We have knockout. We do what we can, and we try to um, eliminate those. Uh, you know, eliminate the the uh, survivor from the match um, slowly but surely. And it's all about a game of endurance. Like, can they withstand the the absolute? Um, uh the like the trial right so like obviously now we have this one like following me around clicking losing their minds 
um, being obnoxious. We're not worried about them because we are focused on the survivors that are do not have flashlights so that the person with a flashlight can go ahead and follow. Now, I'm keeping an eye out here um, to see if they're closing in for Claudette. We also want to try to get as much people marked up as we can. Now, keep in mind also that we are utilizing um, the uh, Ghostface Caught on Tape uh, iridescent add-on so that anytime we get a knockdown um with our power which or ultimately is just our you know weapon um we will be able to instantly recharge our power and jump right into another chase if we can if we need to so if we could down claudette for example we now have it recharged say we can go ahead and um have another person 99 we can immediately go for them um, as an example, and obviously we're like we're not really focused on hooking in the first place, because why should you in that sense, right? Because you literally are punished for um, hooking in the first place because of the fact that the gens will fly so much faster. Now they're extremely greedy, so we use that to our advantage. We we try to go ahead and uh, they overextended there, which is ultimately what we want to do, and then we leave them on the ground again. Now I I don't know exactly how long it takes for a survivor to bleed out um, from the dying state, but because of knockout it will buy you extra time if you do not use knockout with a build like this you're not going to be able to even um utilize the strategy to the fullest extent because of the fact that depending on the range um they will not be able to see them right then they also don't know where their where their where their survivors are like where their teammates are depending on distance as well they won't they won't see them they won't then the other person won't see the other they're also if they have unbreakable um it'll make it a lot harder to recover because of, the, of that uh slowdown so it applies a lot of different things. Um, and as you can see, um, the strategy we're utilizing is knock down and then run off somewhere else. Use our shroud to close the gap. Keep awareness of to who is where. Use the mark on the healthy survivors and then just immediately down them again. So that, um, which is fu fully utilizing the aspect of Ghostface that I've been trying to promote on the channel for ages, I would say. For many, many a video, you know. And that is um, that Ghostface does not necessarily need Sloppy Butcher um, because of the fact that his, his health, um, his power ignores health states. Now, the, only, the reason, right, but also just in general, like healing against Ghostface is essentially useless, um, I would argue. Um, because of the fact that, is, which was, was the initial point, but also, you know, Sloppy Butcher is not necessarily a great perk. I'm using it now due to the whole knockout thing. It makes it a lot harder um you know to get pickups ultimately but anyway so the main thing that i want to i've been trying to, to tell all you guys watching and if you're new welcome you know is uh the fact that ghostface's options um are so that um ghostface's powers essentially eliminates the need for having to work to it's essentially like going against legion like you heal against them but it's really not going to matter because you automatically will go down anyway and uh i i see ghostface in that kind of way as well you are essentially wanting them either injured or marked at all times and that's ultimately where his strength is and the fact that they don't know where you are and that's something that legion does kind of miss out on but that's something that ghostface ha can definitely use to his advantage because his power is essentially you know not like a, a quick and easy undetectable button um to allow for uh some some good ways to sneak up on him and that's why this build functions so well now keep a keen eye on the uh, on the on the uh, gameplay right because as you can see like we're not we're not hooking we're not gonna do all of that we're utilizing what we can right they're running like they we down them we look around we're like okay let's go check the next area where was the last person at let me go there let me force out that pallet you know what i'm saying i'll swing through it as long as we can get it out right we knock it down and uh we break them we break the pallet and as you can see we got three people downed already um now i've I, you could say oh against a swift you know what i mean but at the same time like you guys have to keep in mind that the survivors don't know where each other um are gonna be right because keep in mind that at a certain distance they don't know right they, they can't see each other and another and also they like how we're gonna call out like oh i'm like by shack i guess and they're gonna have to waste more time looking around and if i'm consistently chaining all my knockdowns right because you can see look one knockdown there there's still three people to go right they're all standing up again um that's fine right because it just makes it more interesting so we just go ahead and uh, use our cloak here to, as a mind game we use bamboozle to help us cut down on some of the distance we try to continue marking a little bit more because of the fact that uh depending if they somehow full heal we'll be able to just knock them down with a one shot basically invalidating their health state 
Now with this, um, we didn't we didn't get the swing there. That's okay. We used bamboozle to cut the cut, to cut down on a little distance. You can see, look, knockout value right there, because with knockout the recovery is much much slower. So they will be it will be very hard to get the instant pickup. Um, and then you just leave them on the ground and continue to focusing on on pressuring other survivors. That is ultimately what you want to do. Um, if if you all if you want to opt for like instead of sloppy butcher, you maybe want to try using um, maybe deer stalker or something like that. That could also be a, a possibility. I'd argue that 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 could potentially are like be valuable, but ultimately, and that's if you really want to like lean into the um, into the idea that. Um, you're just going to focus specifically on the on the uh, downed survivor aspect. So, um, and as you can see, I also did a really good mind game there where I faked to one way, then vault in so that we can buy a couple of meters. It did throw her off um, and uh, it did allow for me to get the down. So that's how we're also able to clear out two survivors um, in the first place here. Now, it's, it's such a pressure heavy build. Um, and you have to play it very aggressively. You cannot play it passively. You cannot, you know, mess around. You have to play aggressively um, for this build to work, especially with the gen, uh, you know, the gen bug as it is right now. It is going to be very difficult to try to go for hooks nowadays, especially when, you know, we, I, which my strategy, um, you know, like with the gen bug is to not even focus on gen regression. Um, with some killers, but just specifically just to you know focus on the chase aspects and just and go along with the knockout strategy um, And that's ultimately what we're what I'm going for Now I do hope the gameplays that are in this video do provide a good example of what I mean and what I'm trying to sort of show you guys because um, it in, like, in the philosophy of it as you can see like you know that like we're at a standstill because every time I knock one person down I'm immediately running into a new chase and then I'm immediately downing them again And then I'm and then as that happens like more and more and more like it gets harder and harder and harder to, to you know recover and they keep on bleeding out um, And eventually they'll just fold because there's no way that they can unless they play it perfectly they're, they're probably and you know um and obviously, you know, if you also make a mistake at some points, um, you know, obviously, you know, it can all uh, it can be a little bit of a of a tougher build to use. But I've also never seen Ghostface as an easy character to learn. So you know, it's um, it's simple to learn, I guess, hard to master kind of thing. And uh, so as you can see here, you know, they're I don't know if they're like picking up an item. I don't know what happened there. I think they picked up the flashlight or something. I wasn't too sure what was going on there. <laughs> they just straight up like grave robbed like somebody. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, um, but um, either way, they do get the vault there. I figured that they might get the pickup because I think it was within 16 meters. I think you, see, you can see right there they try to pick her up too. I don't even think she could have, um, and uh, that does allow for them to all bleed out. So, um, so that is going to be um, the end of the video for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys have learned something today. Um, and if you want to try this build um, on either Ghostface or different killer, feel free to do so. It might be very challenging at the beginning, um, depending. But I do believe that it is a good, a pretty good uh, counter to deal with um, the current meta as it is. Now, I'm also thinking I can try to use this build on clowns. So keep that in mind if you are at the end of the video. Thank you. And uh, keep an eye out for the clown video because I think this will be a really good build to showcase on different M1 killers to help uh, with the gen bug. Um, still being like even at this current moment, uh, this current uh, you know time of uploading is still in the game right now. There has not been a patch, so I'm gonna drop the video now, and uh, hopefully some people can get some value off of it. And we also are able to ignore a lot of these second chance perks with this build too. Um, with that being said, once again, thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys will uh, stay tuned for the next one. Sub, you know, uh, check the description for ways to support the channel. Um, do the YouTube thing. Subscribe, like, you know, comment uh, what you thought of the build, and uh, see you guys in the next one.